for those of you who are coming in halfway through this build, um, just recapping, it took me about three days and four really bad songs to build this. So it's time to answer some quick questions, and I'm going to be brief. And as the heading in the first video suggests, it's it's a mini mass rocket stove heater. And, um, and obviously I haven't added the mass yet, but that is the reason for this configuration. I am trying to create a large surface area that will be, um, and surround that surface area with something that will hold heat. And I'm thinking pea gravel or some sort of, um, you know, garden rocks or something. But this whole section, you're not even going to see it, it's going to be surrounded um, by rocks. And so my, the idea is, is to burn this stove, to run it hard and hot, to light it once and walk away and let it build up heat. It is going to have insulation around it. Um, let it build up heat, store it in the thermal mass, and when it goes out, yay, that's great. Um, I don't have to relight it. I don't have to worry about clearing out the ash. I'll do that when it's cold. But it will have stored all that heat in the thermal mass and just continue to leach it out for a couple more hours after the fire is well and truly gone. That's the idea. So, and I'm trying to do that in the most compact way I can conceive or think of. And that being, so I, I, instead of having a J that comes up, that goes around and comes up, and then, you know, the big shroud that goes down the outside, we've all seen them. They're great. They're just big. And then how do you... You know, I'm trying to get the, the, the mass as close to the heat source as possible so it heats up as quickly as possible. That's sort of where I'm going with this. And, you, you know, agree or disagree, it's, this is an experiment. I, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm just having a go. <laughs> That's what I do. I have an idea and I go, you know what? That might work, it might not, but I won't know unless I actually give it a go. That's, that's how I learn. I, I'm, I'm sort of, um, I'm not the academic. I'm not. Um, I was certainly not the mass king at school. In fact, I'm, I'm ter I, don't ask me to crunch numbers in my head, man. I'm reaching for a calculator, I tell you. Um, so, you know, I can't calculate out the, the, the volume or the mass or, or whatever. I'm just going to, I have an idea. I think it might work, and by golly, I'm going to give it a go. And, and that's sort of why I make these videos. And on top of that, I'm hoping that you out there watching will also be encouraged to have a go. And... Who knows? It might fail miserably, but even then, you're going to learn something. Um, I learn more from when stuff doesn't work than when I do when it does work straight up. Because when it doesn't work, you have to sort of sit down and go back through it and work out why it didn't work. And in the process, you usually end up learning a heck of a lot more than just fluking it first off. Um, it's nice when you fluke it first off, but I do find you don't learn as much. So... That's what this is. This is me having a go. And I hope you have a go too, because um, hopefully by the end of this, this thing will be a real perler. We'll see. Time will tell. So let's get on with this build. I've been told by the YouTube gurus, it's best to show and not tell.
I guess that happens.
Okay, um, this is perlite. It is basically expanded volcanic rock. They uh, basically pop this stuff like popcorn. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a man-made thing. And, uh, and I'm going to wear a dust mask because this, this is, has a really fine dust. Probably isn't the best to breathe in, so I'm going to be wearing this stuff, this sucker. Go. Oh yeah, there we go. Definitely not a plasterer. Perlite's going to suck the moisture out of that pretty quick. Well, I've got all this all way too much plaster. I'm going to smear that. Um, mix some perlite with it, actually. I need to just go add some water. Be right back. Right, well, while I've made a mess, I'm going to make some more and just fill this whole bottom um, tray with more perlite and plaster Paris mix, and that'll be my insulation underneath. Kind of got that to the consistency of cottage cheese now. I'm going to go clean up.
So this caged area here will be filled with large, large, well, rocks larger than that, the 25 mil gap there. Um, groovy. And that'll be the mass side. Now I just need to make the other side. <laughs> this side was going to be the side that had all the insulation, but it's all good. It'll work anyway. Okay. This is a panel off an old computer. Um, desktop. It's powder coated already, so that should be. It's going to be the, uh, the wall now.
I don't know. Sometimes it's good to know when to stop. I think now's the time to stop. Tack and dress, tack and dress. There we go. See, now that's weldable, but before it sort of wasn't.
Some of you may recognize this. Um, this is like my thumbnail. This is this is little Aussie Rockets. Um, this is the very first stove that I ever made. And I learned a lot because I made a lot of mistakes when I made this. But all that aside, um, it's full of rock wool insulation and I want to use that for this. So onwards and upwards. I'm just going to crack this sucker open. Steady old girl, this is not going to hurt a bit. Wow, this sucker got hot enough to melt rock wool. That's impressive. Let's just have a closer look at this while we're here. Huh. This is the guts of it. Um, now, where I went wrong with this was the um, this divider. I gave it way too much air. It could have been really only needed a 25 mil gap at the bottom. That's um, a fair bit more than that. Like. 30 or 40 mil and um, as you can see it's not exactly an L it's I don't know what you'd call that but my idea was um, and I should have stopped I'll, I'll keep going this divider that's in here um, I should have stopped it there I should have stopped it right there that way it had all this larger burn area I brought it back to here so I only had this tiny little area for the wood to fight to to burn but Ah, uh, lessons you learn. I worked that out pretty quickly. That was the wrong thing to do. But my thought was, it's a very long area to preheat your wood. And this L shape mean well, yeah, this L shape uh, meant that I'd be transferring sort of more heat into the back side of this, sort of helping to radiate it through and keeping the whole stove hot like the insulation. And it meant that it was just that little bit longer. If I had it gone straight up, it would have been a shorter di distance. But this tilting action helped the, uh, yeah, just gave it a little bit more length. And yeah, so that was, is the insides of my very first rocket stove I ever made after I discovered them on YouTube of all places. <laughs> There you go. I think I'll, I'll rebuild that stove, but I'll do it um, with what I've learnt now, if that makes sense. And we'll, we'll make that another stove, eh? Do the original Aussie Rocket Mark II. <sighs> anyway. Now for the, uh, the, the mass side of things. Thermal mass. That's better.
Alrighty, so that is pretty much it. All I need to do now is make the extension that will slip on to the top there. Um, and yeah, hi Aaron. Oh, that was lovely. So yeah. Q. Blurring is funny. Blurring is well, like blurring has its place. You know, after eating your mother's cooking. Ooh. Now, you can see in the end of this, if it'll focus, um, it's been countersunk. I just drilled that out with a large countersinking piece and then got a nut glowing hot and pushed it in there. And that's how I burnt that hex shape into it, into this little handle. Um, I did that a long time ago. This is off a um, uh, something else. <laughs> Alrighty, I think I've worked out how to um, light this thing. A bit more ease. It's got some paper towel here. I'm going to suck that in some vegetable oil. And that's just going to burn for a while and help, help everything else get going. Alrighty. Enough. Okay. Let's build on that. No smoke. I'll show you that. Now, ooh, there we go. Now the rise is a bit longer, and that's to simulate what the um, what it's going to be like when it's installed in the shed. That being this shed. Let's get you in close. Just that's open a little bit. I'm just going to close it off. Better feed it a bit more. <laughs> so you can see all the paint starting to smoke. So that's a good idea to do the first burn outside. Look at the, how the pot belly black is smoking. Right, you know, I painted it today, so normally I let this paint cure for three days, um, but I'm a bit impatient. I want to see how this works. I think the trick is just to not to disturb it until it's um, until it's cooled down. Okay, we've been going for 20 minutes now, and we are well and truly up to temperature. And um, the outside of here, that is uh, warm, uh, almost cool, as you. The higher you go up, the sort of it becomes warm, but down the bottom, the, the outside is cool. Um, that thing is smoking hot, um, which is good. You want it to radiate some heat into the shed. And this thing is fed really well. Um, I haven't had to sort of shuffle it up. It's got plenty of draw now to um, to stop the sort of the fire creeping up too far up this uh, the feeding tube. And we're not even halfway through all the all the wood. So yeah, and this is um this has really been quite. Um, it's really been behaving itself, really. How many times can I say really? The stones aren't hot yet, but um, we're getting there. But man, there's a lot of heat radiating off that. That's like that's as that's uncomfortable. 
on my hands getting that there. So I think the um, I reckon the fire must be coming a lot further further through and up the up the guts of this now that there's um, insulation happening on this side. Nice. I like this because um, I'll be able to light this thing in the shed and more or less only have to keep one eye on it, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, yeah. It's just running really nicely. Sweet. Yeah. Why not? encouraging. Okay we're coming up to the hour mark and um, so that's how long 2.64 whatever it was kilos of timber last and it's performed really well. Um, it, it needed I needed to sort of open up the front and sort of uh, poke some of the coals further back down the, um, the, the burn chamber but apart from that I haven't really had to mess with it to get through all that wood. Um, just you know the usual sort of shuffle it around make a bit of room so you can fit the um, fit your bit of wood in these are the last two bits here don't know if I'll burn them yet uh, this hasn't got to what I would call a raging boil like it hasn't blown whistle Dixie yet if you know what I mean but it has um, definitely well it's simmering away nicely so you know it's a that's a nice extra feature that I didn't really plan on but obviously there's enough heat hanging around to do that Oh, and let's see how these rocks are going. They're warm. Um, yeah, warm. In fact, yeah, the ones, the one, the ones, oh, yeah, the ones closer down here, I can sort of, it's uncomfortable to keep your hand on. And as we move further back, they get a little bit cooler, but that's sort of, sort of to be expected. It'll be interesting to see how long they stay hot now. Well, there you go. Can't boil the jargon. Cheers everyone. Okay, so it's been an hour and 15 minutes now. Um, the hot coals are still going really well. That's still just simmering away. <clears throat> and the rocks are lovely and hot. That's, that's neat. Hehe, <laughs> oh, that's good. I didn't know. Oh. What am I doing? Uh. Oi. Hey! Hey! Get me straight! <laughs> oh. Got it! Good job! Oh! oh. oh. That was oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Oh. Wow. Oh! Look at that land. No, I got you. No, you can't get it. Got you trapped. You're trapped. 